Welcome back to the Jazz Pursuit. In this video, we're going to look at the great C. De Walton tune, Bolivia, first heard on his 1975 record, Eastern Rebellion. Bolivia is one of my favourite standards, and it's a great example of disguised harmony. Disguised harmony is exactly what it says on the tin. There's an underlying harmonic foundation that's tweaked and reharmonized by the composer in order to disguise it. To improvise fluently over this great standard, it's essential to not only understand the underlying harmony, but also how Cedar Walton has disguised it. In this video, we're going to break down and analyse the structure, harmony and melody of Bolivia, making it easier to learn and remember. Do like and subscribe below, and for a PDF handout that includes all the analysis, plus a lead sheet and transcription of my arrangement, check out our website and Patreon page, linked in the description. Right, let's get started. So first off, let's look at the key bits of information. Bolivia has two main sections. The A section, which is a 16 bar vamp, and the B section, which is also 16 bars and packed full of harmony. The time signature is 4-4, and the home key is D major. Let's start by taking a look at the A section vamp. The A section vamp is made up of a two bar repeated bass line figure, which outlines chord four. As Bolivia is in D major, chord four is G major. So, the bass line starts on the root, G, then jumps to the sixth E, the flat seventh F, and then falls to the 5th D, an octave lower. These four pitches are then repeated for the rest of the A section. Currently, this figure is a 1 bar phrase, and it's turned into a 2 bar phrase through a push into the second bar, on the root G. This not only gives the bass line momentum, but the improviser and rhythm section some rhythmic information to play off. With only four pitches in the bass line, there's lots of harmonic options for the improviser. The only real specification is the flat 7, meaning the chord here is G7. Cool, so that's the bass line covered. Now, let's crack on with the B section harmony. We'll start by looking at the underlying foundation harmony and then explain Cedar Walton's reharms and methods of disguise later. This is a really important step for learning the tune, as it allows us to not only make sense of the actual chord changes, but improve our fluency when improvising. So, the B section starts with a 2-5-1 home to chord 1 D major. E minor 7 is the 2 chord, A7 is the 5 chord, and D major 7 is the 1 chord. Next, we move to chord 4, G major 7, and get there through a 5-1 cadence. G major 7 is the target point of the 5-1 cadence, which means D7 is the 5 chord that takes us there. We then sit on chord 4, G major 7 for two bars, before moving to chord 6, the relative minor of the home key, B minor 7, where we stay for six bars. The last four bars are made up of a 3-6-2-5 progression, which doesn't resolve to chord 1, and instead takes us back to the A section vamp. Chord 3 is F sharp minor 7, chord 6 is B7, chord 2 is E minor 7, and chord 5 is A7. Great, so that's the foundation harmony. Now let's hear it on the piano. At this foundation level, Bolivia looks like a regular standard. 
It outlines common chords like chords 1, 4 and 6 and ends with a 3-6-2-5 progression which is a classic feature heard in many standards. Now we're going to look at how Cedar Walton disguised this harmony and analyse his substitutions. Let's start by looking at the first line. First up is bar 1. Currently this is E minor 7 and the start of a 2-5-1 to chord 1 D major 7. The reham here is all about the chord tones, specifically the 3rd and 7. E minor 7 is changed to E flat major 7. At first glance these two chords seem quite far apart, but in actual fact they're closer than we might think. The 3rd and 7 of E minor 7 are G and D and the 3rd and 7 of E flat major 7 are also G and D. This means that despite the different sound and colour of these two chords, the voice leading through the 2-5-1 remains the same. Here's how the opening three bars sound now. Cool, so that's reharm number 1. Next up is bar 4. Currently, we have D7 and the start of a 5-1 cadence to G major 7, but not for long. This cadence is disguised through the use of a tritone substitution. A tritone substitution also manipulates the 3rd and 7th, but in a different way to the reharm in the first bar. A dominant chord shares the same 3rd and 7th as another dominant chord that's a tritone, an augmented 4th or diminished 5th, away. What makes this even more fascinating is that this is the furthest possible distance away from the original dominant chord. So in our Bolivia example the dominant chord is D7 and its third and seventh are F sharp and C. A tritone away from D is A flat and the third and seventh of A flat 7 are C and G flat which is the same as F sharp. So here, the 5 chord in the 5-1 cadence is changed to A flat 7. But again, just like with reharm in bar 1, this doesn't affect the voice leading through the cadence, as A flat 7 has the same 3rd and 7 as D7. Cool, so now let's take a look at line 2. Another pleasing feature of Bolivia is how each line seems to have its own theme of disguise. Line 1 was all about the thirds and sevens, and line 2 is all about the bass movement. The second line starts on G major 7, and rather than staying here for two bars, Cedar Walton drops the bass note by a semitone in the second bar, making the chord G major 7 over its seventh F sharp. Then we move to chord 6, B minor 7, and the earlier bass fall is now mirrored, and the bass note rises by a semitone in the fourth bar, making the chord B minor 7 over C. So the bass line starts by descending by a semitone, and ends by rising by a semitone, but the disguise doesn't end here. The bass movement from G major 7 over F sharp to B minor 7 outlines a 5-1 cadence. Cedar Walton jumps on this and tweaks the G major 7 over F sharp chord to F sharp 7 to fully embrace the cadence. This feels a long way from the original chord of G major 7, but the melody and extensions on the F sharp 7 chord back up its G major origins, but we'll get into that later. Last up on the second line is bar 4. Rather than B minor 7 over C, this chord is often thought of in terms of the bass note C. If we think about the notes in B minor 7 in terms of C, then B is the major 7, D is the 9th, F sharp is the sharp 11, and A is the 13. This is implying C major 7 sharp 11, and this is often the spelling of the chord here 
rather than B minus 7 over C, despite them being essentially the same thing. I think some of the tweaks are made with the improviser in mind. By slightly altering these chords, it gives the improviser different hoops to jump through and different chords to outline. Anyway, let's now hear the whole second line on the piano. Cool, so that's the trickiest bits done. After we've finished analysing Cedar Walton's disguises, we'll look at the melody, which brilliantly emphasises and outlines his reharms. But for now, let's keep going and take a look at the third line. The third line copies the harmonic movement from the standard On Green Dolphin Street, specifically the C section. This little harmonic chunk pops up in lots of jazz standards, and it's worth getting familiar with it in a few keys. So we start on B minor 7, then the bass note drops to the 7th, A, whilst the chord remains the same, making the chord B minor 7 over A. Next, the bass note falls another semitone, to G sharp, and this becomes the starting point of a minor 2-5-1. If G sharp half diminished is the 2 chord, then this means C sharp 7 is the 5 chord, and F sharp minor 7 is the 1 chord which is exactly where the fourth line begins. A neat harmonic sequence, right? So here's how the third line sounds on the piano. Cool, so this leaves us with just the fourth line. Currently, this is a 3-6-2-5 progression, but it doesn't stay like this for long. The fourth line begins on F sharp minor 7, and this is disguised the same way as the E minor 7 chord in the first bar. The third and seven of F sharp minor 7 are A and E, and this is the same third and seven as F major 7. So F major 7 now begins the fourth line, and Cedar Walton reinforces this by dropping a 2 5 cadence in the previous bar, replacing the C sharp 7 chord. As F major 7 is the 1 and target point of the cadence, G minor 7 is the 2 chord and C7 is the 5 chord. Great, so this leaves us with one final reharm. The last chord to get the treatment is the E minor 7 in the third bar of the fourth line. To make clearer sense of this, I think of the initial chord as E half diminished. A common reharm for standards that begin on chord 1 is to substitute the 1 chord for a half diminished chord that's a tritone away. One classic example of this is Stella by Starlight. The home key is B flat major, but the first chord is E half diminished. This works as B flat major 7 is the upper structure of E half diminished. The stellar comparison is quite helpful for our Bolivia analysis, as it's in the same key. So, the E minor 7, or E half diminished chord here, is changed to B flat major 7. This also creates a pleasing bass movement that descends chromatically through the final three chords B7 to B flat major 7 to A7. Brilliant! So now let's hear the fourth line on the piano. Great, so that's all the reharms analysed. When I first started exploring this tune, I couldn't believe the genius of Cedar Walton, and this has been one of my favourite standards ever since. Now, for the final piece of the jigsaw, the melody. The melody perfectly flirts with the reharmonizations, sometimes outlining them and sometimes hinting at the underlying changes. There are three main sections, and now let's dive in and take a look at the first. The melody starts on beat four in the last bar of the A section. It begins with a semitone approach from above 
to the major 7 of the E flat major 7 chord, D, before falling to the 5th B flat. At this point, you're expecting the melody to fall through the other chord tones in the E flat major 7 chord. But instead, it preempts the upcoming A7 chord and falls to the 13th or 6th of the A7 chord, F sharp. It's worth pointing out here that these three notes, the D, B flat, and F sharp, also outline an augmented triad. So, the melody then rises to the root of the A7 chord before outlining the chord tones of the D major 7 chord, falling from the major 7 C sharp to the 5th A to the 3rd F sharp, before rising back to the 5th A, which is tied into the next bar. Whilst we're here, we should tweak some of the chord spellings to reflect the melody. E flat major 7 in the first bar is all good, but seen as the only melody note in the A7 bar is the 13, we should put this as an extension in the chord symbol. A7 13. The D major 7 chord in the next bar is all good, but seen as the melody note in the following bar is an A, we need to put this in the A flat 7 chord symbol. The A here is the flat 9, so the chord symbol becomes A flat 7 flat 9. Cool! So now let's hear the first line in time on the piano. Great! Now the next section of melody is lines 2 and 3. In the foundation harmony, the chords here were simply G major 7 and B minor 7. In my opinion, the melody here reflects the underlying harmony. The melody is a two bar phrase that's repeated, acting as a constant against the ever changing harmony. It also uses only the notes of a D major pentatonic scale, which is our home key. The phrase starts by outlining a D major triad, jumping from the root D to the fifth A, before falling down through the triad to the third F sharp and then to the root D. This is then developed by falling through the same notes of the triad, but every note is on the offbeat, before resolving to the onbeat for the final D. This phrase is then repeated exactly in the next two bars. The phrase then looks to be repeated for a third time, as the first bar is identical, before there's a turn around the root D, which again resolves on beat 4 to D. Earlier in the video, I said the underlying harmony here was G major 7 and B minor 7, despite the changing bass notes. The melody is the main reason for this, as it's clearly outlining the home key rather than the specific chords. The only chord here that needs extensions adding to the chord symbol is F sharp 7. As there's a D in the melody, this becomes F sharp 7 flat 13. So that's the second section. Now let's hear it in time on the piano. Cool! So this leaves us with just the final section of melody, which fully embraces the harmonic disguise. The F major 7 chord here was an earlier reharm, but the melody reinforces this substitution. The melody preempts the start of the bar by rising from the 5th to the 7th to the root, before running through the entire F Lydian scale from the 5th C to the same 5th an octave higher. The C is then repeated on the B flat major 7 chord, followed by a semitone approach from below to the 5th, landing on the 9th C again to end the phrase and the melody. Cool! And then we've got to add a flat 9 to the B7 chord symbol, as the predominant note in this bar is a C, and a sharp 9 to the A7 chord, as the C is again prominent here. Great! Now let's hear the final section in time on the piano.
Cool! So that's the whole tune, and what a gem of a standard Bolivia is. I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it helpful. For a PDF handout that includes all the analysis, the lead sheet and the sheet music for our arrangement, visit our website linked in the description below. Happy practicing!